But we now turn to the Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service, which, as you know, has been progressing through the amalgamation of three services into one unified service. Phase three of the amalgamation commenced in January of this year, and on July 24th, occupancy certificates for the newly renovated headquarters at Southside were received. The headquarters section of the Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service, consisting of 15 uniform and civilian staff, have moved from King Street in Hamilton to Wallace Point Road in St. David's. The relocation of the senior management team to Southside frees up much needed office space in the King Street facility to accommodate the expansion of the training department. Earlier this year, the UK Fire Inspectorate completed a strategic review of the Bermuda Fire Rescue Service following the amalgamation. There are a total of 36 recommendations contained in the report. The inspector recommended that a new organizational structure be considered that separates service delivery from service support. A cabinet paper needs to be prepared, considered, and approved in order to facilitate the formation of a project management team to implement the recommendations in the report. In August, an audit of the Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service Airport Operations Division was conducted by an overseas consultant on behalf of the Department of Civil Aviation. The audit is a requirement of the International Civil Aviation Organization standard, as well as related overseas territories aviation regulations. The audit conducted an analysis of policy, standards, procedures, and facilities of the BFRS when providing airport fire and rescue coverage at the LF Wade International Airport. Senior service managers will review the final draft of the report and develop action plans for any implementation requirements. As part of succession planning in the service, two senior officers have completed the final phase of the senior command training course at the Fire Service College. The course at the Fire Service College was followed by each officer being seconded to two separate services in the UK in order to get hands-on work experience at the senior command level. Additionally, two officers assigned to the Airport Operations Division attended the Emergency Planning College in the UK and successfully completed the Chartered Management Institute Cambridge University curriculum. I'm also pleased to report that in September 3, firefighters successfully completed the sergeant exams. This again is a positive step towards the overall succession planning within the service. In July, all 12 emergency dispatchers received a four-day refresher course in emergency call interrogation and dispatching. The course conducted by representatives from the Association of Public Communications Officers. Participants found the course to be extremely beneficial and included members of the Bermuda Police Service and Bermuda Harbor Radio Dispatchers and Operators who also attended the course. In September, two of the service's emergency medical dispatchers were seconded to two separate dispatcher centers in the United States. One dispatcher worked with the Indiana Fire and Police Dispatch Center, while the other worked with the Port Orange Regional Communications Center in Florida. During the seconded periods, both dispatchers were able to experience how the individual dispatch centers function and were able to gain additional knowledge in the general operations of such centers. You may recall my lament earlier this year that we might have to recruit firefighters from overseas for the very first time in our history. I'm pleased to report that the current recruitment for the position of firefighter has garnered significant interest from Bermudians. Well over 200 application forms are returned and processed. I am extremely optimistic that we will not have to look overseas to fill any posts. I'm also pleased to report that in July the Fire Service successfully concluded negotiation with the Fire Service Association for a new four-year contract. A significant inclusion in the new contract is the review and change of the sick leave policy. The changes will allow a more efficient and cost-effective fire service for Bermuda. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the executive of the Fire Services Association for their hard work and cooperation during these negotiations. In September 2009, the Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service purchased three Bullard Thermal Imaging Cameras. These devices allow firefighters to be more effective and make better decisions during firefighting operations in areas such as search and rescue, identifying the victim sooner, locating the seat of the fire, locating hotspots, 
incident investigation and determining the spread of the fire. The purchase of these cameras has greatly enhanced the fire service's ability during fires and other emergency incidents. Last year, the service purchased two additional crash fire rescue vehicles for the LF Wade International Airport. There are now four new crash fire rescue vehicles currently in service at the airport. These new vehicles represent the latest technology and design in aircraft firefighting today. You may recall that Bermuda donated one of our retired airport fire trucks to our sister overseas territory in Guilla. Delivery of that vehicle occurred earlier this month. In addition, two officers attached to the Airport Operations Division were sent to Anguilla on a two-week attachment to assist with the training of their firefighting personnel in the driving and operations of the vehicle. Approximately 50 officers were trained during that attachment. We've been working for quite some time on a new discipline code for the Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service. Unfortunately, due to higher legislative priorities, this has not advanced at the pace I would have liked. I am optimistic that the Code of Discipline will be completed in November this year and approved by the legislature in the next session. Let me conclude this portion of the report on the Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service by thanking Chief Vincent Hollinson and his entire team for their service to Bermuda, as well as being one of the most innovative departments in government, always thinking outside the box and being solution-oriented. Thank you, Chief.